In this episode, we have everyone's favorite brokers, Dean Saunders, Gary Ralston, and Todd Dantzler, join us to discuss the 2023 market trends and our outlook for 2024. We hope you enjoy. In our Expert Opinion podcast is brought to you by SVN Saunders Ralston Danzler Real Estate, a full service land and commercial brokerage with over $4 billion in transactions since 1996. Uh, welcome back to In Our Expert Opinion podcast. I am one of the co hosts, Linda, and my normal co host is not here today, which I'm sad about because I think he would have had a lot of fun with the three of you. So we'll miss Chad, but. Michael's here. He won't say anything. Eli's here. He's just watching. Chad's just unsettling. Yeah. Uh, but I have the three brokers who are the reason that we're able to even do the podcast. So I should be really thanking you guys. It's been a lot of fun. And like I said earlier, I had people come up. Nice to us. I will be when we're mm-hmm. recording and then it'll go back to normal when we're done. So we're not recording now. So we could talk about Eli's mustache and his, and his effort to grow that caterpillar off of his lip. Oh, dude. He told me to grow it. Todd is trying oh, to... He's here. He got a little party in the front. He's got the party in the back going. I know. He's working on it. Todd is out for blood this morning, so. Um, no, but we just wanted to do a recap. This is our last episode of this year, of this season. Um, so we thought that we would do kind of an end of year you know, what you guys are thinking and memorable moments and memorable deals. So I hope you guys are ready for that. Gary is ready. He has his uh, computer or well, it's an iPad. iPad. Dean has an iPad too. He just didn't bring it. I feel like you try to use your iPad like a cop when you're trying to drive. And by I feel that, I mean, I've seen that. And and Dean has a notepad. And it's terrifying. He has an electronic note. I was just telling Jennifer, I've been in the car with Dean one time. It was me, Dean, and Augie. And Dean stopped in the middle of the highway, put it in reverse, hopped over a curb. And I'm like, we're also listening to a song called Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. So I never got in the car again. What's your point? <laughs> what, 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 that's why you have I a now, that's why you have a four-wheel drive. I now know why his car is always in the shop. I think that's my point. So it must have been a Tuesday. Oh <laughs> I, I, I personally made a suggestion that Dean needs to be indulgent and have a driver. Oh, I agree. I mean, I agree. if you took a vote, I, I, the only person I haven't convinced is Gina. If I can convince Gina, I, we, I do worry about you, Dean, driving. You can, they can drive you around in the motor coach. You're very distracted. You know? Well, you could have like a mobile office. Anyways, anyways, uh, we just had our annual barbecue. That was a lot of fun. Did you guys have a good time? Always. Great yeah. Time. See yeah. anybody cool? Just reconnecting with customers and clients from all over the state. It's always, always a good time. How many years is it now that we've done the barbecue, that you've done the barbecue? Since 2005. So 18. how many years is that? 18 years? 18 and we would have taken a year off for COVID. Um, so yeah, I've actually done 17 barbecues. Yeah. How many people do you guys know? About 300. Okay. Yeah. There were, there were almost 350 that uh, responded via email. Yeah. Many with apologies because they couldn't make it is a, <laughs> it has become well, a yeah, famous 400 event. RSVPs. We yeah. probably had about 350 yeah. who showed up. Yeah. It seemed like a big crowd and I was really glad it didn't rain because I think it rained that was great. Uh, the first one, it rained. And that was the, the first one that we had here. here yeah. The first it one rained, here. and that yeah. was uh, a logistical learning yeah. process, too. Yeah. So the rain didn't help. Well, did, did you say a few words about rain, kind of like Elijah did, uh, Dean? So it wouldn't rain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we were all praying. Um, but we had a couple of other things go on this year, too. We had our Lay of the Land conference. So I kind of wanted to talk to you about that and how you thought it went and maybe just like a recap or something that stuck out in your mind that you would want to talk about. Uh, Well, upon reflection, you know, looking back, the land conference was in March. Yeah. And, and, you know, the the market has continued to evolve and change. Um, The big big thing for Florida is growth. We're still having people come in. Um, that's providing uh, strong demand for single family development land. And because interest rates are so high, uh, the, the, 
you know, that's a big story for Florida is growth versus high interest rates and other areas are keeping people from um, ha impacting other states more than probably us. But those high interest rates are keeping people from selling their houses. Yeah. And so there's a lack of housing um, and there's a deficit in housing. And so that's why the single family product is particularly um, a little more robust than it would be ordinarily. Multifamilies taking it on the chin a little bit. Um, as folks are having to adjust to cost of construction and cost of capital. So there are sectors that are starting to see impact. Um, but on the land side of things, we're still blowing and going. Things have slowed up a little bit, probably, just in terms of number of transactions, but we're still doing a lot of them. But during the, maybe the first two quarters of the year, do you think that it was slower? Or do you think it's gotten slower as the year has gone on, like toward the end? Well, I think that the um, the result of the interest rate increase yeah. is starting to wear. Um, I've, been, I've been telling people that um, I thought this year, going into it, I thought it would be a transitional year where people would be doing less transactions because they're waiting to see what's really going to happen with the economy, what's really going to be the impact of more than doubling the cost of capital. Is it going to be long-term adjustment or is it just going to be short-term? And I think people were hoping it'd be short-term, that we could bump it up, knock inflation back down, and then the Fed would start lowering the rates again. Um, but now with, you know, quantitative tightening, not easing, uh, they're taking money out of the economy and the Fed has tightened credit and so raised interest rates. And so all of those things are having an impact on people. And I think, I think now people are slowly getting the, the sleep out of their eyes and thinking, you know, there's going to be, we are going to have some impact and, mm -hmm. it, and we're going to probably have to start thinking about those long-term implications of maybe higher rates for longer than people had anticipated. So, you know, I've, I've, I've said, you know, this year people hit the pause button, kind of waiting to see. Next year I anticipate uh, in the next couple of years, really, we're going to be hitting the reset button. Okay. The, the new reality is going to impact every sector of, of the economy. It has to. When you double the cost of capital, it will have impact. We don't know exactly what all those impacts are going to be, uh, but and it'll impact different segments differently. You know, not everything's going to be hit the same way, but it will all be impacted. Do you think that with all of the single, you know, the families moving into Florida, that there's going to be an impact on easements, or how is that going to like play in with easements? And then you talk about you, when you say easements, you mean conservation, conservation easements. Um, well, they're not. There's not really a correlation with people moving to Florida and an increase in conservation easements. Um, and by conservation easement, so the audience knows, really what we're talking about is, is where landowners uh, get paid to not develop their property. And They're selling their development rights. They're selling their development rights, correct. And so um, there's a, it exacerbates the need for yeah. easements, right? And the more people move here. Um, but I will say, uh, really, this ad administration, uh, Governor DeSantis and uh, the recent legislatures mm -hmm. have placed a, a, an emphasis on funding conservation. That's not been done really since really since the early 2000s. Honestly, I mean they they, they would give it paltry funding every once in a while. They might get 50 million into Florida forever. Maybe they'd get 100 million in a really robust year. But they had been used to doing 300 million dollars a year. Okay. And, and the values of property that they want to protect has probably tripled since the Preservation 2000 program started in 1991. And so, you know, it, it, it's, um, the impact of the dollars now is, you know, you get, it buys less. Yeah. Right? But they have put some significant resources. They put almost a billion dollars into conservation last year. The White Shutcher did. So. Yeah, but don't you think it's important 
now to have these conservation easements because so many people are moving into Florida. Well, exactly. It, it, again, it exacerbates yeah. the need and I think for quality of life issues, um, you know, it's an, an important component, right? We all want to have green space. We want to have recreational places we can go and recreate and, you know, put our kayak in a river and kayak down the river places to go camp yeah. with our families and do things. So, yes, it is more important. And I will say that we have been to Florida is really a leader in conservation funding throughout the and country. And don't you hope it slowed or retard the expansion of urban sprawl by doing these things yeah. and concentrating the development where the resources and the... Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting that you say that, Todd. I mean, uh, the city of Lake Wales uh, just two weeks ago came out with a plan to do just that very thing, right. to try to figure out a way to kind of keep the core uh, but maybe put a circle around it. I think they're calling it the green necklace or something, or maybe something else is called the green necklace, but they're, they're looking at a way to try to do that. Now, they don't have any money to do it, right. uh, but I hope, I think but at they're, least they're hoping they can. But and they're thinking correct. about it. So, you know, back in, in the, the mid nineties, 94, when, when your brother and I worked on doing the conservation easements, me in the house and, and, and Rick in the Senate, uh, and actually got the first program funded to buy, but to buy development rights. Uh, there have been several, and at the time, people looked at me like I was crazy. Um, my landowner buddies looked at me like I was a communist. My government buddies looked at me like I was a fascist. But it's become mainstream. And where now. did you land in that spectrum? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right in the middle, baby. <laughs> So, so it's, but it's mainstream now. I mean, people are doing them. There have been several iterations right. of easements. I mean, the Florida Department of Agriculture is doing agricultural easements on property, make sure it stays in ag. Um, City of Lake Wales is hoping to use it um, as a tool for planning where the community goes and where it won't go. That's where you run your utilities, provide, that's where you run your roads, that's where you run yeah. your infrastructure and so it's it's fun to important. it's fun to see the concept that right. that that we created 30 years ago be utilized in so many creative ways um, and great you know I mean it just protects more land yeah so well the, with the, the the other side of that Dean is it um, it has an impact on supply it means that the things we've been focused on in commercial properties the uh, road highway frontage commercial properties there's a finite number of those because the roads we're building now are, are um, limited access highways and, and we're controlling growth in a better way. Although I, I'm, I'm a commercial guy and I think we need to pave a lot, so forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we both have cars that are lower to the ground, so we, they need to pave more there's, roads. There's never enough parking. Never so, it's, enough parking. so it's a real juxtaposition between growth and conservation. I mean, there's there's a need. I mean, people are coming. And so I remember a couple of years ago after um, we had sold the Green Island Ranch and then I sold the Winter Haven Corporation property in Lake Wales, both really large development tracks. And, and one of my dad's old friends called me up and, you know, he was fussing, ah, you know, he's selling to all these developers. Blah, 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 blah. I said, well, John, look, I mean, I believe a man has a piece of property, he has right to do with it you know, what he wants. And in these situations, both of these were poised for development and that's what people had wanted to do. And so I just help them. I mean, I believe, I'm a strong believer in proper property rights. I said, I said, but if you can get people to quit moving to Florida, you know, I'd be yeah. happy to quit selling them land to develop. I said, however, just so you know, I've sold 9,000 acres this year that went into development, but I did 29,000 acres where I represented people in conservation. I said, so, so I get to assuage my guilt a little bit, you know, you get credits. So, you know, you know, yeah, <laughs> but at least I'm keeping, <laughs> I, I, I'm keeping a lot of yeah. Florida yeah. from being developed. Yeah, for, 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 for our business, Dean, and everybody else's, uh, real estate is space for people. So more people's more demand. And yeah. so it's good. You know, we're growing uh, 1142 people a day. That's a faster percentage rate than Texas. So it's good to be here. And it's good to be in the, the middle of the state. But, but, it, but it is also important, really, that we, I mean, I think people come, they, they want to, they 
you know, we don't like the traffic on the roads. There's a lot of things we do, but we don't want, right, that we don't like with growth. And, and it's hard to keep up with. But one of those is our green infrastructure. And really, Florida has been a leader in that arena. And it helps provide for quality of life. Um, and I think that's being reflected, frankly, in the legislature and the governors, I mean, in the cabinet, you know, supporting so much money in conservation. Yeah, absolutely. So while people are moving into Florida, we moved also or expanded into Georgia. Was it this year or was it the year before? Uh, well, it's actually been. It was this year. We're so, it's been several years yeah. that we've, we've actually been licensed in Georgia and done deals in Florida, I mean in Georgia. But um, but you got opened, a brick and mortar. Yeah. But, but we, yeah, but we, we actually bought a building uh, and an office in Thomasville. Um, so, yeah. They have wonderful rugs up there. I'd love to visit one day. Wonderful what? Rugs. Rug, rug. <laughs> Amazing rugs up there. Okay. Amazing. Um, we had some nice rugs, rugs. in the building. <laughs> we do have nice rugs in the building. Uh, so <laughs> is there going to be um, a Lay of the Land conference in Georgia? Yeah, so we're going to expand, uh, take, take a lot of the footprint things we've done here in yeah. Florida and replicate those in Georgia. Uh, and one of those is our land conference and our lay of the land market report. So oh, you are going to do a from Georgia, pay attention. And so we'll have a, um, a report on land values in Georgia. Just so everybody knows who might not know what the market report is, that is, I don't want to say that's the only reason that people attend the lay of the land conference, but that's the thing that people, they can't wait to get their hands on. That's and so takeaway. it is. And so what, why is that so important to people? What is it? Well, so the, the, the market, we call it the lay of the land, um, really is just to try to give um, landowners a feel for what's going on in the marketplace. And so we research all the sales of land across the state. Uh, we verify the sales. Um, we're not verifying them to the degree that a sure enough appraiser would do it, mm -hmm. but we're just verifying that it was a market rate deal uh, and it was arm's length transaction. Um, and we provide that data in our report and we categorize it by timberland or citrus or farmland, uh, transitional land, um, uh, even track and solar sales where we can because uh, there's a lot of property getting gobbled up by uh, power companies to build solar farms. So, uh, so we try to just capture those various segments of the market and let people know what's going on. Uh, and so we'll list the date the, the property sold, county it was in, the price, price per acre. Uh, we don't try to divulge any buyers or sellers' names, just that the transaction happened and when and so where. Yeah. But, uh, but it's really the only source of that data right. but yeah, you, out there. But you mentioned that, but the land conference is for landowners. It is not a brokerage thing. It's not for planners. It's really for the clients that uh, Dean and the agriculture guys here in the company yeah. have for them to understand better what land values are out there because they own land. The yeah. commercial conference is a little different than that, but I think on the land side, that takeaway of the, the market report is important. They keep it on their table, yeah. they keep it by their desk, you know, and they use it as a reference for the year. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's a great yeah. tool for them. Right. And then our conference, as you mentioned, Todd, really is designed to be for landowners. And the whole idea behind it is to give them just a, uh, an understanding of some of the things that are happening in the business that we see that maybe they want to know about. Yeah. Um, and more than I, just anecdotal evidence, some actual sales yeah, no. which are provided. Yeah. So it's not just hearsay or, hey, we think this is what's going on. Here's some data that kind of backs yeah. up where we think it's going. And yeah. I think the land guys do a wonderful job on yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think you've been kind of modest with pioneering in that, Dean. There is no other source for this kind of information on land in the state of Florida. And so that, that, uh, that is one reason why people uh, really are attracted to your knowledge base and the things that you and the team have done. It, it is good to be a pioneer and it's, you know, I'm a data junkie, so <laughs> it, it's, um, it's impressive. Yeah, definitely. And so um, you said for a couple of years, are you licensed in Georgia? Mm -hmm. How many agents do you have there now? 20-ish. I, I think, I, yeah, I'm not really sure about 10. Um, yeah. Was it just like an organic thing? You know, were you just going to Georgia or why? 
I mean, I obviously it borders Florida, but why did you pick that? <clears throat> well, I mean, it's it just a, a lot of folks from Florida mm -hmm. would be doing, you know, selling land here and looking for property in Georgia. Um, and we, you know, have to deal with the broker up there. So this made sense to, yeah. to, to move there. And then, um, you know, one of the things, uh, Linda, that I, I really believe strongly in is growing with good people. Yeah. And so Bryant Peace has run our operations up there, and Bryant was moving to Thomasville. And uh, so I said, well, let's let's giddy up. Yeah. Let's, uh, really open it up and, and go with it. So Bryant has been a key to, um, you know, our efforts up there. It's done a great job. Um, but really has been the key to a lot of our growth uh, here. It's just oh, for really sure. Good, yeah. Really good people. I've had um, some of the Georgia people on the podcast and I've met a couple of them and they're um, like truly experts, I think, in their field. Yeah. And they have been not necessarily, you know, a, a broker for a long time, but they have, they know everything about timber. They know everything about ag. Um, I've been really impressed with all of them. Yeah, They've been great. Yeah, I mean, and so it certainly makes uh, the uh, Florida Georgia game a little more interesting. <laughs> I know. I haven't been to that in years. Uh, I probably go back, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. I was there once and was asked not to come back. Oh my so. gosh! <laughs> what, what, what's going to happen? Oh my what, gosh! What's going to happen when you're in Alabama and Texas, Dean? I mean, the whole. Uh... Well, you know, we'll have the Southeastern Conference covered. I like it. <laughs> we'll just be able to root for anybody right. that day, you know. Um, well, I'm always, I'm always rooting for the I SEC, know. so. You have to yeah. with the Gators doing what they're Anyways, um, Gary, you ready to be in the hot seat? Go ahead. <laughs> it's, it's uh, you know, and actually I'm well insulated because I'm the man in the middle. You're always the man in the middle, Gary, but as Todd said, you're the ham in the ham sandwich. I wouldn't think about it exactly that way, but I appreciate the compliment. It's not quite the word I use, but you're close. <laughs> you're in the right meat <laughs> Family. At least I'm not the hot dog. That's, so. that's, that's so true, Gary. That's so true. Uh, but, you know, kind of building on the fact that we opened an office in Georgia. We also opened an office in Orlando. Um, what were, you know, I, I think it was a natural kind of decision because we're so close to Orlando. Um, right. And I, you know. Yeah, the, the, the real growth vector for Florida um, is uh, the I-4 corridor, the Tampa, Lakeland, Orlando, MSAs. That's, um, it's about 7 million people. It's 30% of the population of Florida and 40% of the growth. And interestingly enough, the uh, Lakeland MSA, Polk County is the fastest growing county in the state. Next is Orlando. The Orlando MSA is about 2.7 million people. Uh, there's a great deal of um, interaction there. and. And I lived in Orlando for 20 years, so I know the market. And, and it's it's been really, I think we're going to be very productive and successful there. Yeah, and you have added how many agents to your office over there? I think we're up to 20. Maybe that was the 20 I was thinking yeah. about Georgia. So I think we're at 20 there. Yeah, I, I, interestingly Give enough, take I, I just did a, CCI, a CCIM CI 102 market analysis for commercial investment real estate class in Orlando. Two of the students in the class have approached me and said they want to join us. No way. So. Okay. So you're recruiting that way too. Not necessarily. <laughs> it's just uh, How, not overtly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, so they wanted another. But one. if you're listening out there and you're interested in real estate, <laughs> call us. And you're an expert in your field. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but I think that we have some interesting people over in Orlando. You have some younger agents. You have some more seasoned agents over there. And so are, are the, for the younger agents, you know, are you guys, um, are, how are they doing? You know, are you guys like mentoring them and, and how's yeah, that going to work? The, the, um, Dean was a pioneer in uh, location technology tools. And um, not everybody. That's another way of saying mapping people. If you just Layman's term. That's yeah. one of them. But no, I, it, it, I'm, uh, I'm very respectful of powerful tool. And, so we, several of the young people have gotten very good at using that and integrating it into some modeling and, and some of the uh, demographic tools that we have. So I, I, I think we're going to see some outstanding performance from some of the younger people. I know. I think I want to see the SVM signs on the you know high-rise buildings down there. 
I always wondered why we didn't have them. Uh, no budget. Because they didn't work that hard. I did a couple of bank buildings, uh, leases uh, in Orlando, where they got the building signage as part of it. But I don't think we're ever going to pay the rent for building signage, Dean. I don't know. I just... Uh, and so, actually, this year, for you, we got to do the I-4 Corridor Conference, which I feel like, was there a conference last year? Yeah, we, we skipped uh, COVID. Yeah. Yeah. But I've been two years, I think. Yeah, two, yeah. two years. But I think this was the seventh year that we've done it, uh, five conferences, very well received. And again, it's because of that growth in the I-4 corridor. We had a, a great participation with panelists and experts, and um, we were very pleased. One of the, uh, uh, Ben Friedman from uh, Duke Energy provided some demographic overview that was very insightful and good, consistent with what we've been preaching. And then we had um, a panel on I-4, uh, which interestingly enough, that panel had standing room only. I wonder why. Because if you're Because I-4 I is standing, standing room, room only. only. Yeah, but I... uh, they, they, um, <laughs> we, we did a... Um, we sitting did a, room only. If you're yeah, sitting yeah, the I-4 car. parking lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm it, familiar. You're absolutely correct. So anyway, it was very popular. We were able to get information, early release on the FDOT plans to improve I-4 through Orlando to Tampa, and we did a, a, a video, short video clip on that as well. So uh, I, I think things are going to look better. And the real answer to that probably is Brightline. Uh, they were on the panel, Christine okay. Coffer, and I actually took Brightline from uh, Orlando to Miami uh, for my uh, uh, 102 class, and I, I, um, I was favorably impressed. I mean, uh, you can work. Uh, Dean is able to multitask, so he can do text and Dean doesn't have to drive while he's driving. But I mean, multitask yeah. while he's driving. What yeah. do you mean? Yeah, so I, I exactly yeah. got two hands and two eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't do that as well. So I but on the train it's really good. I mean you can they've got good Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's uh, was the was there anything at the I four uh, corridor conference that really stuck out to you or I guess what I want to know is is it all doom and gloom is the economy oh, no, going to come that, crashing down are we like no, I, I, are we yeah, done I, I, there's so much talk about what's going on with the nation and that's true but we are an unusual bright spot and, and I think even for our firm if there's a slowdown it doesn't mean things are going to zero you know if the market slows down by 20 percent it uh, people then have uh, more interest and expertise. And I think our business will grow and exceed. I mean, um, uh, Dean and Todd are both legends in, in the market. And so... Uh, Don't sell yourself uh, short, Gary. Well, okay, so I'm a minor legend. <laughs> but, uh, I know that you used to give out Rolexes for so, Christmas. So the, the, I'm the, um, <laughs> did. When, 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 when things are tough and it's difficult, you want the best. And so I, I think our business will do well no matter what the headwinds and other things are. And, and you know, when you think about it, Dean mentioned uh, rates being high. The 10-year the Treasury um, average for the last 100 years is 4.5%. That's where we are today. The, uh, the median is under 4, and I think the sweet spot is probably between 3.5 and, and 4. The good news is this morning they released inflation. It's, uh, I think, 3.2% was the announcement year over year. And so the 10-year is sliding. Dean hit the nail on the head with his comments about, uh, you know, the Fed and others not buying as much. I mean, that's the, the, the top three buyers of U.S. Treasuries, the Federal Reserve Bank, China and Japan, are down. Their balance sheets are a trillion dollars smaller than it was last year. So they're not buying, okay. uh, they're, they're not selling, they're just not, as it matures, they're not replacing it on their balance sheet. So we, we need you to buy more treasuries, Dean. So, so really, I, I would kind of just take what Gary said and just say, you know, really, we've kind of come back to a healthy place, not ultra low interest rates, not ultra high. I mean, Todd, when you and I got out of University of Florida, uh, interest rates were 17, 15, 18. 14, 17, yeah, I mean, they were way up there. I mean, my first house was 12, I paid 12 and a half percent, and it was a reverse AM, which meant my payment, <laughs> you know, my equity got worse, yeah. right? So, yeah. so it was, but... Um, but you were I, able to get a mortgage. I was able to get a mortgage. Right. That was uh, but it does, uh, so I don't think any of us would suggest there's a panic at all, even with 
the rate's a little bit higher. Because again, historically, we're kind of in that zone. But, but it's the transition yeah. from the ultra low rates into a higher rate that will provide the stress in the system. And it will provide stress in the system, without a doubt. Um, so, but it also probably means, as Gary said, people need more help and understanding yeah. about what's going on in the business. Yeah, I, I think the stress has kind of happened, Dean. I mean, with the um, inflation comments this morning, that's an, indi an indication to me that maybe we're going to see uh, some shift in the economy. There'll be some easing, and uh, but you're right about the stress. I, I think the next two years, uh, there's going to be more need for the kind of expertise that we have here than ever before. And then um, I know this part of our company is near and dear to your heart because your daughter runs it. You mean property management? Yes, I yeah. do. I, so I, I just want to talk about pro our property management yeah. division because I think that they have grown exponentially yep. over the last year um, in part uh, Thanks to Lauren Smith, your daughter, and uh, we call her Lauren Ralston. Smith. Lauren Ralston Smith. I I apologize, no, Gary. Right. No, uh, Lauren's a second generation certified property manager. I, you know, Dean and Todd encouraged me, and we launched property management uh, uh, some years ago uh, because of that. Lauren's a second generation CPM. She's the first person we've had in that position that has been truly focused and uh, has gotten, I think, the support and encouragement from all three of us. Dean's been really definitely uh, setting. He keeps telling her that she's got to get better than me. <laughs> and so um, they've done a, that, that team, we yes. have a team, has done a remarkable job. And, and there's such a need for that in, uh, in the marketplace. So we filled the need, and I think we're going to continue to grow and expand. We've got property management in Orlando now. And oh, you do? I didn't know that. That's yeah. great. Plus yeah. the lending management side. Oh, yeah, so we've always said, done that. You know, yeah. We also do land management. Years. Um, you know, for selected clients, we've done right. a lot of, yeah. Yeah, I would be um, remiss to not mention Dan Brooks and building up the property management side as well. He's, he's really like boots on the ground yeah. and gets things done really quick. I Dan, Dan is very good. We call him Mr. Fixer. I know. And I, I'm, uh, I, I've been working to help him on uh, some of the building principles. He's very good. I, I, I see him in the not too distant future, maybe taking the uh, uh, Florida building uh, contractors exam. Yeah. He's, so Dan's the, the fixer. You call him, so he's the Ray Donovan of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Of, of SRD? Uh, uh, put that on his door. Well, you know. <laughs> it's not just the property management, the, yeah. the leasing side as well. Yes. I mean, we've got a full leasing team yeah. and property management team, and when stuff breaks or when you need the technical side that Dan provides, so it's soup to nuts on the property management. It's not just managing, it is the leasing as well. I don't yeah. even know what that means. Right on. Soup to nuts? Or soup to nuts. Everything. Everything. Everything between. It's a, huh. uh, it's okay, Linda. It's another generation. So yeah, another generation. that might be a few generations. Gary's good with his AI. He can say <laughs> you must he really be a Lake West Dupin's me. I know who Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk a little slower for you. <laughs> I think one of the great things of AI, you know, it, it's like uh, Google on steroids. Yeah. I'm a big fan. I've adopted it and. Uh, is that it does allow you to find very quickly um, answers and interpretations to things. It's going to make us all smarter. Like soup to nuts. So just put it in there. I will. Yeah. I'll ask uh, I'm sure the robot the okay. bar whenever I... We're all yeah. going to be working for the robot here pretty soon. So uh, it's, it's the Google Bard app. B-A-R-D app is the app name under Google. I did get a little ad for it the other day. I need to try it out. Um, okay. On. Do you have any other closing remarks? Anything else you want to share? Well, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, when when Todd and Dean and I got together, uh, you know, a dozen years ago, um, I knew Dean was an outstanding performer. He actually was a student in one of my CCIM classes back in the. Did he ace it? Um, Seventy-two. Oh, <laughs> aced it, aced he, it. He, he was the, uh, he was the only student 
that while in class was able to talk on the phone too. I... So he was doing deals, but he did a wonderful job of uh, mesmerizing everybody, and he was the most popular person in class. Naturally. So at, at the cocktail party, everybody wanted to talk to Dean. But he was on the phone, so he couldn't talk to anybody at the cocktail party. <laughs> it so. used one ear. So <laughs> he's, uh, Sometimes he's talking but, to me while he's talking to somebody well, else now, on the know, phone. I have stupid hearing aids, and my phone will sometimes talk to the hearing aid. So people must just think I'm crazy. Because a hundred percent we do. A hundred. Yeah, even Michael's nodding. A hundred percent. There are times when I'm having a full conversation, and I realize he's not talking to me. He's just looking, yeah. and he's talking. But he was still making sense to you. I was still answering, you, you know, like responding yeah, and engaging. So yeah. <laughs> it's a gift. We, 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 and then I'm like, you know, had a really good convo. It was that bard guy Gary's talking yeah, about we, it. We, one of we've, been, we've been blessed with uh, attracting good people. Yeah. And uh, you're a good example of that. And um, number and, one broker right and, here. And, and being, and being yeah. able to grow, and, um, uh, and and that's giving people the opportunity to grow is something that we really try. <clears throat> We try to encourage them to learn and earn, and um, I mean, yeah. all three of us feel that way. We're helpful, hold hands. What can we do to help you with deals? Definitely, and that's made a big difference. Yeah. I mean, I, I think in some respects, not that we've just scratched the surface, but I think people are going to be surprised to see the increase in growth in our market share in, in uh, both land and in the I four corridor. I hope so, because that's job security for me. So I'm <laughs> counting on everybody else. But okay. Todd, hey. you're up. You're, I'm going to talk about your favorite thing, real estate. I love real estate. Todd uh, I've done it for 40 some odd years. Had a pod, has a podcast now that came started this year, and you said that you will talk about anything other than real estate or politics, which is ironic because that's your life. Well, you got the real estate covered here. Everybody <laughs> else in the world's got <laughs> politics. I want to talk to people that are interesting that people want to listen to and find out backstory about people and what they do, but we're not here to talk about my podcast. But thank you for the plug. Oh yeah. What <laughs> yeah, is it called? It. Todd's podcast. And you have uh, yeah, it's Toddanceler.com. Uh, thank you, Eli. It, it's um <laughs> it, it's amazing. I, I, I listen, have, rate, share and subscribe. Subscribe. Okay. Yeah, I, I have some concern that Todd may be out of the real estate business in a couple of years and doing uh, celebrity work. So yeah. but I know him, so I can get an autograph. The next Oprah, right in front of us. <laughs> I don't know about that. But I need seven more zeros to keep up with her. Gary only needs one, but uh, but but you'd be happy to take just a couple of those zeros, right? But your podcast right now seems to have gone off the track again, Linda. This is exactly where I wanted it is to go. Is your ADHD kicking in? This is exactly it. where I wanted it to go. Right. No, um, okay. So you've been in real estate for how long? Um, look, probably 41 years. I got my realtor emeritus status last year, which is 40 years. Well, then I would think, and you've lived in Polk County. My entire life, life, except for five wonderful years in Gainesville. But I was born and raised in Go get it. moved back there. That's where I met Dean, was uh, various interactions at University of Florida. He was an uh, AGR fraternity. I was ATO and uh, served in the student senate together. And he got me into Florida Blue Key. and. Um, have just done various things together over the years, and that's how we kind of got back together after running to Gary. I think I was a student of Gary's at one time oh. as well, yep. and um, we're still okay. learning from Gary. I know, every day. Sometimes every day. it's nonsense, a lot of times it's good sense. And, you, and Todd, when you graduated, you I mean, your dad already had... Yep, he had a he had town and country real estate. Town and country real estate. Uh, probably the largest brokerage in Winter Haven. So I went, I came home and ran my brother's campaign, Rick's campaign okay. for state rep. And then I kind of did real estate from then on and opened my own office in 94. And um, small and, you know, being part of a big company now is really an interesting dynamic for me to shift gears from being kind of a small shop owner to and part of a much bigger company. And, I'm the last one that joined them. And, but and your dad long. really, I mean, the, the name Dantzler uh, in Bolt County has always been synonymous with real estate. I mean, because right. your dad was so well thought of and yep. former chairman of the Florida Real Estate Commission and just, you know, highly regarded. Right. And, um, and my so, grandfather. So, so were you, Dean. <laughs> well, but. <laughs> right. My grandfather had his license with my dad. My grandfather came down and was going to be a farmer. 
uh, that didn't work out. And um, he joined my dad. I don't know that he did a whole lot of real estate. He was kind of failing in health when I was a young youngster. Yeah. And um, but he was never a principal at dad's office. And, and Florida, Florida Realtors, uh, Todd, you, you know, you've been a legend and a leader. I was teaching a class there and, you know, your pictures in the lobby. So I was Photoshop before Photoshop was cool. <laughs> I said, I want less face and more hair. Oh they my gave God. It to me. Uh, okay. All well, of that have... being said, you would know best about maybe some challenges or opportunities in Polk County. Well, I think we talked about the challenges and opportunity through the the economy. Um, I thought, I, I mean, I noticed my business uh, slowed down last fall. Okay. It seemed like that's when people first took the first gut shot or gut punch of the interest rates going up and deals kind of got put on hold. They started to be retraded. Um, like, how do we hold these things together? We got, I, I was able to get, we got some deals done late spring, summer, so it seemed like we're starting to kind of get back to some normal with the normalcy, which Dean explained. And we're probably in that new norm for another year or two. Um, I think that uh, the challenges have been the uncertainties. The challenges have been coming off of COVID. And I think if people don't understand the impact of Governor DeSantis keeping the real estate markets open, take a look at New York, take a look at Illinois, take a look at California, talk to those brokers who couldn't leave the house. I mean, you know, we did things different, but we were still able to function. Yeah. We were able to build this office during all of that. And um, so the great part about this business is you do have the ability to be flexible and change and malleable with the market. And I think you've done an excellent job um, with this company in doing that. So it's been fun. So going from a smaller firm to a larger firm like this, and like with all of the, I would say that this whole thing is an operation, right? Like there's not just one person that runs everything. And so do you think that there are challenges to that or, you know, are you- Well, like, there's challenges, but there's great rewards too. Yeah. I mean, the resources that are available here are phenomenal. Uh, I noticed that when I was president of the Florida Realtors, the uh, East Polk County Association, we had 350, 375 members and one or two staff members. You go to the Florida Realtors and you've got 100 staff members. At the time we had 80,000 members, now we're 243,000. Mm -hmm. And not to equate these two, but it was, you know, from a, where I was the only person and I had a little bit bigger office where I had a couple of, a secretary and a bookkeeper and about 25 agents to come here. The great thing is you have resources. Now that's a lot of people to manage and it's a lot of resources to manage. So the management is a little different, mm -hmm. um, but the rewards, it offers so much greater rewards too, through growth, through education, through opportunities, um, just from the different people who are involved, brings different opportunities to us as agents and brokers, because we're all working brokers and you never knew who that person is that's in the company that may come and say, hey, Dean, I need you to be part of this deal or help me with this. Or, you know, Gary, can you help, you know, Mary or John over here because of what you know, you could be a great team member. So um, I found that refreshing um, is different, but it's it's been a very great thing for me. I think it's been a good thing for everybody. I mean, Dean started off one horse operation and you know, through a lot of hard work and effort from Dean and um, from a lot of people, it's grown to what we are today. And, you know, we're on a pretty good growth mode. Do you think that, so you said that you saw a slowdown last fall um, from maybe like the operation side. Do you think that there no, was- I, I saw it on the sales, on the broker yeah. side. Um, I'm sorry. But that's, just, where, that's where I saw- Less phone, less, less phone calls. Less, less phone calls. Less deals. deals. Right, deals right. that were supposed to close. So how do like you- Six months later, you get them closed. I found, I found that the calls we got, while we, while there were less of them, mm -hmm. they were more productive. Yeah. Right? They you were, think that they were more legitimate or yeah, maybe more yeah, serious? Were more yeah. 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 Hey, yeah I really need to sell now rather than, yeah, yeah. let's try it. Uh, now I need to sell it. Yeah. And I think we'll have that coming up. Oh, too. There will be deals yeah. that are coming up for renewal. There will be deals where people were saying, hey, I want to wait to get in the market. Oh, man, I just missed yeah. it. Let me get back into it. So, you know, I, I think from a marketing and sales side, I think that we've had 
three of the yeah. best years ever during COVID. I was gonna ask, you know, if the slowdown that you see had any impact on the operation side or did you guys have to shift at all with marketing um, or even just like staff? We brought Jennifer Williamson on, who's really uh, assisted us with marketing and taken us to a new level and, and increased the marketing side. Um, you know, when you're in a downside, down market, it's a lot, it, it takes a lot of guts to increase your marketing expense, yes. to ex increase your marketing efforts, but that's what you have to do. And that's what, through Dean's leadership and through the leadership of the company, we were able to do. And, you know, when, when things are great, properties, they don't sell themselves, but it's a lot easier. When things are tough, that's when you need to get creative and that's when you need to get much more responsive. And I think we have done an excellent job of that. I think so, too. So, you know, you talk about the, 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 the smaller shop to the larger shop and having the resources that we have now, Todd. I mean, I can remember be, you know, taking those post hole diggers and I'd be on my phone. Yeah. And trying to dig, you know, so I could put my sign up, knowing I had. Did to get Bluetooth that. change your whole life, Dean? <laughs> well, well, that helped. Um, but just, just the the resources, because now we have yeah. somebody that. Yeah. Well, now we got you know, four hundred signs out, we, so you know, that puts our signs up for us and takes them down. Right. That yeah. was always the thing that always got me. Was you, leave your daggum sign up there. But when you're the only guy, you're cleaning the bathroom, you're, you're having putting to do the signs up, you're doing everything, and now we have the ability to focus on what we're good at and yeah. not doing the administerial side of it. The, the, there's a lot of synergy for that, but I think we have built a remarkable reputation and platform here. Uh, yesterday, I received a call from someone that I've sold several properties uh, to over the years. Somebody called him about one of his properties that I'd sold him on 27. He you know, bought it, so he's gonna give it to his grandchildren, called with an offer. And so he told him, he says, well, you know, I got to talk to my realtor. So he sends me a text, calls me and says, so Gary, what do you think? And can you step in and handle this? So I, I think that's an indication of where we are. And I've had two calls from people that said, Gary, are there any deals I can buy by the end of the year? So uh, I, I think our reputation and the momentum we have here is just beginning. Our marketing is definitely unmatched. Like our flyers are, um, listing reports that come out unmatched, so. I think we should get Chad to take Gary out one day to put up a day's worth of signs <laughs> and make sure we get aerial drones of yeah, Gary I, doing I, that. I, I want to do the get drones. Low, ground level video and stills and we'll compare his blisters to Chad's when it's all uh, said. Uh, and, uh, have uh, you ever put a sign up? A four bait sign up. Before. I, I don't have the recollection of having. You know done. how to work a pair of postal diggers. <laughs> Gary was way bigger than. Yeah. Listen, he didn't have to start at the bottom. Gary was already at the top. Uh, uh, Todd, I'm I'm a certified building contractor, oh and uh, and I have a graduate degree in construction management, so I know about digging holes. I love I've it. Never done it. I <laughs> directed it. I've done I've dug more diggum holes than I care to think of. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I used to end this podcast by asking who your favorite broker or staff member was. And so for this special, very special episode, I'd you like to ask who your favorite broker. I'd like to ask who your least favorite is. No. <laughs> and if you won't tell me yours, I'd love to tell you mine. Your least favorite broker? Agent. Okay, why don't you tell us who your favorite uh, broker is? Gary, today. Oh, boy. I he complimented me. Let's go Come on. He complimented me. How could he not be? You know, and, and Dean says- I would I actually need, like an- you know, Dean says, I need to work on my personality skills. He says, if the numbers, everybody knows who to talk to, but Gary, when it's personal, you, you know, there's a lot of room for improvement. So I'm trying. I know, uh, but you know what? If you ever want to get Gary's personality, just go to the Lakeland Country Club with him and have a drink. And it's Listen, incredible. I'm at, the, I'm at the Florida. You really Georgia. shine. I'm at the Florida Georgia game, right? I mean, this is, <laughs> I, and I'm getting texts from Gary about, you know, Shift your economic analysis. stuff that's going on at the Fed. And I'm just like, okay, okay this is closer. Gary's enjoying his Saturday. That's right. I'm enjoying mine getting our rear ends whipped by Georgia. That's so, right. We, we, we are a remarkably good team. And then I forgive me for the self-serving comment. We're all different. Yes. And, uh, but we're a good team. And we have a remarkable team around us. Linda. That is, that There's is absolutely so many special people here. Yeah. That, um, it, you know, it, it's, um, 
I like getting up and coming to work every day. That's one of the reasons why. I love that. Yeah. I'd love and to feel special. that one day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're the most specialist. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Okay, well, I think that's it. Thank you guys for, um, you know, being here for close to an hour now. Sorry, Todd. I said it was going to be 40 minutes. Um, I knew it would be 40 minutes. I know, I know, but lots so to cover. I page of questions left. I got through them. Uh, yeah. I got through them. Yeah. So thank you guys very much. Really, really.